what is going on youtube it's your boy spanko and today i'm excited because i'm bringing you guys a deck that i haven't done in a long time but i think it's a very powerful and funny enough pretty affordable deck that you guys can be playing in today's format and be competitively successful with and that deck is sword soul sword soul is still such an insane deck it's good going first it's good going second it sets up boards it breaks boards it does so many different things now if you guys enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu Gi Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel you guys get deck profiles combo videos dual replays and you guys are also going to get shorts every single day which means you're always going to have something to see so make sure to subscribe to stay tuned into all of that now thank you guys all for watching i really appreciate every single one of you and with that let's get right into the deck profile okay so to get things started off with the monsters here we are of course starting off with three incredible ecclesia to be honest with you the sword soul lineup is pretty standard i would say i don't think this lineup is ever changing so three moye three of the long one as well as two taie this is kind of all you need i think this is not anything that's like different from old sword soul list it's just the most consistent and of course moye is your best normal summon this of course going second for you is really powerful as well and that's the thing that i love about this deck is that going first and second you have so many built-in cards that can do both which is really nice and of course Tai is just at two because this is a card that's really good in the mid to late game and it's another card that you kind of want to search for follow-up rather than starting off your turns with this so this is kind of the sword soul lineup and then for the other sword soul cards we're playing three sword soul emergence as well as one sword soul blackout so that's it for all the sword soul cards and the reason i'm only playing one blackout i was on two for a while but the reason i'm only playing one is just because there's so many other cards that i'd rather i guess draw now don't get me wrong drawing blackout is never a bad thing like it's actually still not bad to draw it but it doesn't really do anything for you going second unfortunately Unfortunately. so that's why we're only playing the one and of course you have to play three emergence get you to any of your names over here not ecclesia but any of the sword soul names which is really important so that's it for the sword soul stuff i don't think i would change this up at all like i think it's just very standard and i think it's just the most powerful way to do it Moving into the tenyes, I am playing a little bit of a spicy kind of tenyi that you guys are going to see. Now, typically we play three Vishuda, three Ashuna, and two Adhara. I think this is like the standard tenyi lineup, but there is a tenyi monster that I actually chose to play that I think is very, very powerful, and that's one tenyi spirit, Mapura. Now, I know a lot of people play Shatana, typically the water one, but I actually chose to play Mapura because it does a few things for you. First of all, it's a fire attribute, which is really nice. It being a fire attribute means that if you're going to Taboxia with it, rather than let's say a Shatana plus a token or a moye plus a token mapura being fire makes it really good because all of the sword soul tokens are water so making boxia with this just makes it so that you get to shuffle back two which is insane because boxia is just such a good card going second so mapura does that for you it's of course just another worm that you can use for moye or long one and so that's why i just like playing the mapura over the chitana now chitana can be really good because there are some cards in the extra deck like dry guy that needs a water in the graveyard or the ice jade guy i'm not playing those cards i'll just tell you guys from now i guess it's a spoiler but I think Mapura is just really powerful for different reasons. This also has a pretty cool effect where if your opponent targets a non-effect monster that you control, you can banish it from your hand or graveyard to negate the activation. Now, why this is really powerful is because a lot of the time your opponent will try to get rid of the token rather than the monster. Like let's say it's a sword soul monster. They'll try to get rid of the token instead. And the reason for that is because the tokens are actually the tuners in the deck, not the actual monsters. So why that's important is because you can protect the tokens. You can protect your monk of the Tenyi as well. So that's why I think Mapura is really cool. And that's just just my explanation as to why i'm playing him i think this is just a spicy tech that we're playing but otherwise i think these ratios are pretty standard i don't think we change these up at all of course they're all very very consistent and very very important to play so next up for the hand traps and the board breakers we are playing three ash three valor three imperm i think these are the best nine hand traps that you guys can be playing in this deck valor specifically is really good because it's a level one tuner and that actually synergizes really well with cards like your ashuna and your vishuda because you can then go into a level eight synchro with this so if you really need this to be your normal summon it can be and it can be no, not bad for you now granted this deck is very consistent and it's very unlikely you'll be doing that it is just another option for you which is really cool and so for that reason i do like valor in this deck now i think gamma is really powerful but the problem is gamma is now at one so that's why i think valor just makes a lot more sense but a card that i'm playing that i love in this deck that a lot of people are not playing is book of moon i think book of moon especially in this format is just so powerful against so many different decks kashtura of course being one of the best decks if not the best deck of the format i don't think that's really questionable especially after nationals and i think it took 21 out of the 64 spots which is insane by the way the fact that it's taking a third of the spots kashtura is really really powerful and this card of course is really good into the mirror match it's good going second as a board breaker same with imprim right like imprim of book of moon are really good going first because you can set them but they're also also really good going second as board breakers which is really nice so that's why i really like playing the three book of moon here and that's kind of it for the hand traps as well as the book of moon i just wanted to include book of moon here because i just think this card is just so good in today's format and it makes so much sense to be playing especially in a deck like this one that can fit so much non-engine 
Moving on to the last four cards of our deck, we are playing Two Potted Desires. I think it's just the best draw card that you guys can be playing in this deck. One Called by the Grave to stop hand traps, and then one Harpy's Feather Duster. I always like playing this card as the 40th card, just because it's really good to, you know, go second, break any back row boards. Now, keep in mind the really cool thing about Harpies is even if you're not playing against Labyrinth or any back row decks, Harpies is really good into a lot of decks that either have a field spell that they need to get off, or even if they're just setting one to two cards, if you see a line where you're able to OTK or able to win the game or able to break the board, but you're worried about a back row that could be an imperm or a back row that could be a solemn strike of course harpy's feather duster is really good now the one thing i wanted to mention about this deck that i didn't mention just before we round off the main deck here is that i think this deck going second is just so powerful because you have cards like uh ecclesia you have cards like vishuda even if we're not counting all these hand traps here you have main deck cards like vishuda and ecclesia that are just really good going second and then harpy's feather duster does that for you as well so that's kind of what i wanted to mention is just this deck again i said at the beginning i want to say it now going first going second is really powerful going first of course you can set up some crazy boards but going second this deck is still very viable. Moving on to the extra deck here, we are playing two Shishao, one of the Chengying, and then one of the Sinister Long Wand. I think these are the standard ratios. Shishao, of course, being one of the most important ones that you guys can be playing in your deck. So, of course, you got to be playing two, one, and one. I think these are the best ratios. Wouldn't change these up at all. So, yeah, there's not much explaining to do here. We're playing one Baron, of course. That's the typical. Everyone's playing Baron in this deck. Baron is just the best level 10 that you guys can go into, especially going first. Ending on Shishao, Baron plus Blackout is just typically a really powerful board. So, you have to be playing the Baron, of course. One Crimson Blader. This is my spicy tech this is a card that i always love in this deck it's not something that you guys necessarily have to play but i love it in this deck so what this card does is if it destroys an opponent's monster by battle it makes it so that your opponent cannot normal summon or special summon any level five or higher monsters during their next turn now why this is so powerful is against branded or against some other decks like it's really cool is that if you're able to make crimson blader and you attack over one of their monsters or even against floanderies right if you're able to make crimson blader attack over one of their baby birds they can't actually summon any of their big birds later or against again kashtura if you're able to attack over something with this then they can't summon any of their cost turn monsters etc etc so crimson blader is a card that's very techy don't get me wrong it's not something you're gonna go into super often but it's really fun to go into which is why i love playing it and it's a card that when i first topped with this deck when this deck originally came out it's a card that i played and i loved it was so good into branded so i kind of just have a special place for this card in my heart and that's why we're playing it and then we're playing the one draco berserker of course very powerful as well especially when you're locked into worms it's really nice then we're playing two boxia and one yazi this is i think really important to be playing these three i think yazi is a card that cool quote unquote is cuttable like there's not a lot of lines that go into yazi there are some lines that are really powerful when you do but there's not that many where you're actually choosing to go into yazi over other things so i would say out of the 15 cards in this extra deck this is the one cuttable card and if you guys wanted to cut this for another tech card or another piece like a dragite or you wanted to play the ice jade guy i've seen some people play the geo math mech the level 12 guy as like a boss monster you guys can do that as well yazi is just a card that i think can be very powerful here and again boxia is really important because you can shuffle cards on the field up to the number of different attributes monsters you use for this and again if you're using mapura for this it's always going to be two so shuffling two is insane and then lastly we're playing the one chow fang chow fang is a really good card helps you stop like nibiru and Valor and other hand traps that your opponent may be playing so that's why i really like chow fang it's a really good card to go into first it's also randomly like this happened to me once and i don't think this is going to happen very often but it's really randomly good into decks where you're making this and their main monsters are light monsters like if you randomly go against you know the dogmatica stuff i think a lot of the mana dm stuff is light as well so if you're making this with a light it's just really powerful funny enough so that's why i really like chow fang and it just makes a lot of sense to be playing and then lastly we're just playing three monk and one shaman this is pretty standard not too much explaining to do here but that's it for the extra deck 15 cards right here again yazi is the one thing i guess you can, you can cut around and play with if you want to now, just before we get into the side deck over here, I do want to say that keep in mind, this is a skeleton. This is not something you guys have to be playing. I think it's just something that works really well for me and my locals. But again, if you guys are going and taking this deck to your locals, make sure you build your side deck accordingly. So if your opponents are all playing like Kashtara and your locals is just a lot of Kashtara players, you want to make sure to side for that. If your opponents and your locals is typically like back row players, you want to make sure you side for that. This is just a side deck that's been working really well for me. Through Dark and Ruler No More, I think this is really powerful when you're going up against those big unbreakable boards, even though you're playing a of hand traps you're not always going to see them and dark ruler is one of those cards that's really powerful even if you're not able to otk this deck does a really good job of picking apart your opponent's board and then you can set up your own board which makes it really hard for them to recover so three dark ruler three gamma seal for pretty much the same reason if your opponent sets up a baron or sets up any cards that you really can't get over any unaffected monsters and stuff like that gamma seal of course is always going to be an answer and then for more back row hate we are playing three cosmic cyclone in the main deck we are playing the harpy's feather duster of course but going first and going second this card is really good going first against back row 
codex you can set it going second you can always break boards with this which is really nice and then lastly we're playing three anti-spell vagrants this card is absolutely insane while this deck does play a good amount of spells if you're siding this in when you're going into games two or games three you're going to pretty much be activating all your spells anyway you can side out a card like book of moon so that you can side this in and it's really powerful because this just shuts out so many different decks it shuts out sky striker it shuts out stuff like dino that needs a lot of their spell cards to be activating to work and just all, all these other like decks that need their field spells and all that this kind of just stops it all so it's really powerful to be playing three anti-spell and then the last card i'm playing is three solemn judgment this is something i like to play when i'm going first into games two um sometimes games three because my opponent will usually side in board breakers and it's really nice when you can set up chishao baron and then have a judgment under it they might think it's blackout if you don't search the blackout and what's really nice about that is because then they are kind of trying to play around the blackout they try to get rid of the monsters or whatever and then you have the solemn judgment it becomes really powerful in that sense so that's it for the side deck not too much that needs to be explained here this is just something that works for me but again keep in mind you're always going to be building the side deck based off of what your locals is looking like and and that's kind of how the best way to do it is but this is just a formula that's been working really well for me so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that is my take on sword soul for the post nationals july 2023 format i think this deck is so so powerful going first going second it can do so many different things and i think this deck is something that you guys can take to a locals even a regionals and be very successful and very competitive with now if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel you guys get combo videos dual replays deck profiles like this one and much more so make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all of that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko signing out peace